guys and welcome to another episode of the Los Blancos podcast. Today we are joined by Sean from the Real Madrid Nation and today we'll be discussing the Real Madrid captaincy if Ramos leaves, Castilla players' his future and lastly Luis Campos and what he can bring to the Real Madrid sporting director role if he joins. All that's to come, join us after the short interval. Okay guys, we will start with the captaincy of Real Madrid, and all as as you all know, Ramos looks like he'll be leaving. Of course, we put uh, Ramos wants to stay. It looks like some reports have come in that Ramos wants to stay, but we don't know how that's going to happen. And in a few weeks, we'll talk about that Ramos leaving, whether he's leaving or whether he's going. So I've drawn up a list of candidates, and we're just going to speak about them. So first up. On the candidacy, candidates for the Brumbridge captaincy, we're going to go for Benzema. In my opinion, he he is a very strong candidate for this. Have you got anything to speak about this? Okay, yes, of course. I think we have to go with Benzema because Benzema actually showed a lot of leadership and he stepped up last year, especially with Sergio out and Marcelo not starting. They really showed a lot of leadership. I just think we have to go with Benzema because Marcel was the vice captain. He isn't a short starter. Nacho isn't a short starter. And Casemiro just joined the club in 2013. Benzema has been there since 2009. He played more. He knows the club well. I just think we have to go with Benzema. Of course, we have a lot of other options. Players like Tony, like Luca, they are all good players. Luca, captain the team, they all have leadership qualities. But I just think we have to go with Benzema, just, just for what he does for the team. Um, with, with Benzema, I think that the main problem is he's up front. I prefer to have a, a captain in the midfield, but Benzema, of course, he brings so much leadership, even if it is from up front. Maybe, yeah. if he's, because he's not Spanish, you know, because... Our previous previous captains have been Spanish. That could be a problem, but I don't think it is, considering he's been here for so long. Going to move on to the next candidate. Sorry? Okay, we're going to move on to the next candidate, which is Modric. And Modric is, of course, the captain for Croatia, which might bring him a lot of help. He's also been at the club for... Nine years, I believe, now. It's, it's joined in 2012, I think it was. You got anything to add to, to, add to Modric? Yes, I think he would make a good captain. Like you said, he's a captain for Croatia, and he actually did well in the World Cup, and then his team to the final. But however, I think he has one, one additional year on this contract. I just think for a captain, we need more longevity. You know, we don't want a captain just for one year and move on and sign another captain. I just think we need a captain for like two years at least three years more than that player so that he would have that captaincy for more than a year so the team wouldn't be changing the card as as we did in 2014 at Casillas and we had three captains within one year so I just think that we need a player who will have more longevity at the club that's why I went for Benzema Modric because a good option maybe to sell him for like a game or two if Benzema is not there but I just think because of his age and his contract I don't think that a player like Modric would suit a captain for this team. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I think he, he would be a good vice-captain option if uh, Benzema's out for one or two games. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he, he obviously showed a lot of character in bringing Croatia to the World Cup final, being the captain that stepped up and helping them reach that World Cup final. Um, but I don't, uh, yeah, as as you said, the longevity of Modric, he's 35, he's, he's not going to be here forever, as much as we would love that, he's not going to be here forever, so. Yes, even Benzema may not be like a starter forever, because maybe in two years, I'm sure that we are going to look to sign a younger striker, because that's how it works on this team. Mm-hmm. Maybe the team would want to sign a like Haaland, and Benzema may not be a short starter, then we would have to switch for a new captain again. So I just think that Sergio was 28 or 29 when he started being the captain for the on full time. So 
that gave him like seven years of being the captain. So that's maybe my ideal position. But I don't think that there's anyone at that age who should be the Real Madrid captain. So that's why I said I would stick with Benzema. I think there's one that should be at that age who who's definitely a big candidate. We'll get on to him in a second. Uh, Tony Cruz. Now, Cruz has got... He's, he's obviously a big character inside the dressing room in terms of his aura. He's all out aura. Is, is, because he's such a fantastic midfielder and he's done so much with the club. But the main problem with Cruz is that he's more of a quiet character and he's more of a, a, a guy who's... Not it doesn't really talk much. He, it seems like that guy, doesn't he? And he's, if if you saw that photo from twenty fourteen after Germany won the World Cup, all the all the players were celebrating, while Tony was just sitting down on the on the on the, one of his on his seat. It, it it tells a lot of where he stands within the dressing room. That may be the main problem with Tony if he becomes captain. He's not more a a leadership type of guy. Yeah, I actually think he is kind of like a laid back guy. He's going to do his work. He's going to do his bit for the team. He's going to work hard. He's going to help the other guys. He's going to get his opinion. But maybe he doesn't have like the demanding attitude like maybe Benzema does, or sometimes I see Luka Modric does it on the field sometimes. You know, although he's intelligent, yeah, I don't think uh, he should be the captain. Like you said, I mean, he can fill in for a few games, but I don't think that he has like the captain's mentality. But I think I don't mind Tony being the captain maybe for maybe a one off La Liga game, but not for the full time captain. I don't think he has the demanding attitude to be the captain of this team. Yep. So we're going to move on to the next one, which is Rafa Varan. And he, he, in my opinion, is a very big candidate purely because of his age. He's 28, I think he is, right now. And that that could be very big, you know. He's he's the same age as uh, roughly when Ramos took the captaincy, and it it seems perfect because for so long he's he's always seemed like the 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 heir to the captaincy at Real Madrid, and of course, uh, and for the centre back, right? Of course, but what about that? Is he has one year on his contract? Um, it doesn't look like he is interested in signing the contract. Yeah, that, 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 that is the main problem with uh, Varane. We haven't, heard any, we haven't heard any talks about him getting back to the club because I've seen that we offered him a contract and he still hasn't gotten back to the club maybe two weeks. I just don't think that he should be the captain if there is doubt about his future. You know, so I just think maybe if he signs that contract he can be an excellent candidate. But I can't see him being the captain if he isn't signing that contract. I think we need someone who is more committed to the club, you know, without having doubts about his future each day. And when he's playing, a contract talk is on his mind. I just think we need a player who is sure he's going to stay at the club, who wants to stay at the club. So Jack, that's why I think he's a good captain, he's a good player. He captained the team a few times, but there's so many doubts about his future at this time. Yeah, with with Varane, I think Alaba coming in really does affect his future because that wage that Alaba got was took up a huge chunk of what Varane would have earned. So Varane's future is now seriously up in the air. Whereas before it was maybe he stays, maybe he goes. Now it's seriously in doubt whether he goes to Man United or Chelsea or where, wherever. So Varane. I also think it was a slap in the face to him. Maybe he felt a little offended about that contract and maybe he think he wasn't valued enough by the team. So maybe he wants a new beginning, a new challenge. And of course, he will make more money, I'd say. Yeah. And after how many years has it been? It's been 10 years, I think, at Rundrig after signing from Lons in France. You know, maybe it's it's time for him to leave. He, he may feel like that. And if we could get a solid fee for him, then... It could be time for him to leave. Yes, of course. I think we, if we have a solid fee, maybe I would say forty million because he has one year left on his contract. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the uh, journalist saying that we are trying to get sixty from him, but I don't think that's possible because he has one more year. I think forty would be a good cost. Um, we could use forty million um, in the bank as well because I think if Sergio, if if Sergio stays. We 
have elemental or natural and other work, we have too many center works. So I'm, I'm sure one of them might leave this summer, so I'm not so sure who, but one might leave. Yeah. And for the last candidate, we've gone, I've, I've gone for Nacho, and the, the reason being, he, he seems perfect apart from one thing, and that's the fact that he's a fringe player. So that's not going to really help him in terms of possibilities, whether he stays or whether he goes. Obviously, also, he's not a short starter at this time as well, so yeah, maybe so, in two years he can be a good captain, but he isn't starting all the time. Because the thing about Nacho is that he will play well when he scores a ball. However, there will always be players ahead of him. There's when Sergio Ramos um, and Rafael Ferran isn't playing, Nacho steps in the end as well. But when they are back, of course, they are going to start over him. Whenever Nacho has a good season, going into the next season, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if he's going to play. We don't know how many minutes he's going to play. So that's why I think it's a bit difficult for Nacho to be given the full-time captaincy if he isn't going to start. Uh, and and I, I think he's perfect, apart from the fact that he's a fringe player. He, he's, he's Spanish, he's, he seems like a real leader on the pitch, and he's been here for, for ages. So that, that all works in his favour, but the fact that he's not a star, that's, that's, not, that's the main reason why he's not a real candidate for this captaincy yeah of course i have to think so as well there are so there are too many players ahead of them there are too many i'm not going to say more talented players because the talent doesn't make the captain however there are too many players ahead of them in the back and order no matter how well he plays um for example the last game of the season natural playing so well as i felt came back he started immediately back into the starting lineup so I'm not too sure um, how, how many games he will start, even if he stays or as a captain. So, a good candidate for the captain. He came through the academy, what a player, what a mentality. But I don't think he will be the captain of this team, actually. Yeah, that, that's it for the captaincy. We'll... I actually think um, we should stick on Casemiro as well. He is a Brazilian captain oh, yes. For, um, yes, for the upcoming um, tournament. However, he had only been here for maybe seven, seven to eight years. And that's a lot of years, actually. But maybe there's too many players ahead of him at this time. Yeah. What do I, you think? I think Casemiro, he, he, he's a leader on the pitch. He, he seems like he loves the club. And, he's, and he's always, he always gives his all. So that's going to rub off yes, on yes, the younger players. And that's what you want in a captain, a role model. So Casemiro would be perfect. But I think... Just a, a little bit longer at the club would be necessary for him to become captain. Yes, I have to say, I will stick with your point on that as well. Okay, so that's the end of this section of the podcast. We'll be moving on to cast the players after this short interval. <laughs> In this section of the podcast, we will be talking about Castilla products and what, what their futures are at Real Madrid. So we're going to start with Miguel Gutierrez, and he is he's a fantastic player. He's left back, obviously, and he's he had a very long stint at left back towards the end of the season. Uh, instead of Marcelo, well, Ferlan Mendy was gone, so. He, he he was very good, he was very consistent, he was solid on the ball, he was composed. What do you think about uh, Miguel Gutierrez? Yeah, like a... Choices, good decision making. He made, good, he made good interceptions with his head, with his foot. I think he's a smart player, he makes the right choices. I think he's an excellent candidate to be a backup to Mendy. Yeah, obviously Marcelo's had his issues with fitness and just being or his work rate on the field. He's he's obviously not the same player as he was, let's say, four years ago. And we're going to need a new left back because Marcelo looks like he's heading out the door, but also he he looks like he could stay as well at the same time. You know, with Marcelo, it's, it's a really difficult situation. He could play wing, he could play centre mid, but it doesn't really suit him. That's not where he's played the last twelve years of his of his Madrid career. What do you yeah, think? I just think? 
But yeah, just think despite his versatility, he has a talent. Maybe to play as a left center midfielder, maybe the same position that Isco would play, or maybe as a left winger. But there are too many options that I would put ahead of Marcelo at this time. There are just too many. I don't see Marcelo making a good contribution on the wing or even in midfield. That's why we signed Alaba for, for depth in positions in midfield. I just think even without Alaba, I just think Marcelo is a bit slow. He makes too many mistakes with the ball at his feet now. And in defensive positions, in the, in the, in the middle to the defensive third, he's a liability at the moment with the team. I just don't think he has the speed to even play at left back, not even left wing actually, because I don't think he also has the fitness. Sometimes his legs are a bit jagged in the second half. That's why even when he started, you can see Miga coming on for him or even Nacho coming on for him. Yeah, with 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 Marcelo, it's, it's a tough one because we're going to have to find out a way if he stays to to use him because his wages are, are gargantuan. They're, they're massive, so... Obviously, I think it's one year left on his contract. So we've, yeah, got, just... we've got one year left on his contract. We're gonna make we're gonna have to make use of him, just like Gareth Bell. If if we if we can't get rid of him, might as well make use of him. And that's not in defence because he's too much of a liability. He makes yeah, too many mistakes. You said make use of him, but the issue is with Bale. However, Bale can be utilized because he's efficient. We need a goal scorer. I think Bale is a good goal scorer. Maybe to come off the bench or maybe start a few games on his head, and he will make good contributions high up the pitch. I don't think Marcelo can make excellent contributions at this time. Like I said, he's a liability. I don't think he can make excellent contributions. With Bale now, you can say you know what he's a goal scoring winger. None of our wingers maybe produced good numbers in, in the final third, and Bale can do that. With Marcelo, however, I don't have a case for him to maybe start over Alaba, Mendy, even Miguel, Nacho. There are too many players ahead of him. Yeah, so we're going to move on to Hugo Duro now. And obviously, Mariano has been not very good this season. He scored that goal against Villarreal, which got us all excited, but it came to nothing in the end. So Hugo Duro would be an excellent backup. Jovic is coming back. You know, if those two could fight for backup with Benzema, that would be pretty good. I think we should ex uh, ex uh, make his stay permanent from Hitafe. And he he's been yeah. worthy of that in Castilla. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. And I also think that he plays so well at Castilla. He's too good for the second W division. I just think maybe he needs a step up. Not too big in a step up, but maybe in the Segunda division, maybe a lower team in La Liga. I don't think if he stays at Madrid with the first team, of course he would be an excellent third choice um, striker. He would be good to have with the team in training, maybe a good depth option. But even if, the, if Jovic comes back, there are too many options who I can say can play as a force nine if Benzema which is not available. Rodrigo can play as a force nine, even a Sensio if he stays as a hat. I just don't think we should have him as a two choice. It would waste his talent. So maybe he should have a loan elsewhere, but he definitely have the talent to be a player for us. Yeah, so I th I think there's a, a quite a few clubs that could that could uh, facilitate Duro. It, you know, you could, you could say, make a case for Getafe having him. Because Getafe's goals have dried up with Angel Rodriguez, you could also make a case for Espanol, who are just going up. You could play alongside Raúl de Tomas, also a Real Madrid uh, Castilla, ex Real Madrid Castilla player, and he could play for maybe other seg uh, top Segunda uh, División sides or lower La Liga sides. That that would be perfect for Hugo because that's his level right now, and he, I th I think he in a few years time when he he his stock has gone a bit high. We can we can we can make a bit of a profit on him. And that yeah, of course. Um, you are spot on there because I don't see him as a long term starter. Because of course, maybe in a two years, I'm sure we're going to go after a player like Haaland. So that's why I think his position in the team maybe should be as a backup. Because of course, we're going to want to sign Haaland. Of course, we're going to want to sign the next striker coming out. So I don't see him as a starter long term. So maybe we can make a good a good profit off of him in the future. Yeah, I, I mean, I see uh, uh, Mariano Enduro basically as as that Castilla product who looks so exciting in Castilla, and then we eventually sold him. Yeah, 
hopefully if if that happens we don't bring him back and ruin him ruin his career but that's beyond the point the point is that we make a good profit on him and and that's what that's what we should aim to do because he's not a starter he won't become a starter and unless he has a fantastic year in a lower league a lower division side I, I, yeah, of course, because I think he's too good for Castella. I think he would waste his time being on the bench for us. So maybe a good loan would be efficient for him. He can get minutes, consistency and confidence as well. Yep. Next, we have Marvin Park, who obviously played some games in and out of the first team. And he was he seemed very consistent. He was, he was you know, composed and he was solid. That's all you can ask for of a, of a player just coming in. He played right wing back, right wing. He played against Getafe and uh, I can't remember who. It was Granada, I think. It was right wing back. And uh, uh, he he played very well in those games. And he played ahead of Odrezola in some games. Obviously, Odrezola do, reclaimed his position as backup. And he did that well. But I do see a future for uh, Marvin Parker. He could be a, the next Lucas Vasquez, you know, a guy who sticks around and is a useful rotation player. What do you think? Yeah, of course. I think his versatility will make him an excellent candidate for um, a spot on the first team. However, maybe there are still too many options ahead of him. Maybe Lucas signed a new contract. So we have Lucas Vasquez, we have Carvajal, we have other like Rodrigo who can play in his position. But I just think he's maybe strictly on a winger on the right-hand side. I don't think maybe he would be efficient on the left-hand side as well. So that maybe works against him. But however, he's a talented player, but maybe too many players ahead of him. When I see him, he maybe plays a bit like Akimi a bit with his speed and overlapping overlapping runs. But at this time, maybe there are too many players ahead of him at this time. Yeah, Mallorca have shown an interest in him. And that would be a good move because Mallorca, have, uh, I believe, are coming up next year. So uh, being a, a solid starter in a, in a um, relegation fighting side, that did well for... Um, for Take Kubo, and that could do well, very well for Marvin Park. Obviously, I don't see much more than a starter, for, uh, much more than a rotation player for Marvin. I mean, he's got a, he's got a very weird background, doesn't he? He's, his dad's Nigerian and his mum's South Korean, I believe. Which is yes, that's it. Yeah, which is I mean, when I found out about, it, he used to play for Tranmere Rovers, which is, yeah, in England, that's yeah. actually unique. Yeah, that is very unique, <laughs> which is which is very weird to find out. But yeah, he he he's just, nothing more than a rotation. I think in a few years we could make a profit on him just like that. But or he could turn into the next Lucas Vasquez. What do you think? Yeah, of course, of course. I think his versatility works for him because he's good defensive before a winger. Actually, I saw him play at fullback. There wasn't any defensive lapses. He was good in his positioning. I think he's an intelligent player. I just think that, like I said, there will be too many options ahead of him. But the good news for him is that maybe Carvajal has entry issues. Maybe Audrey Zola might be leaving. Lucas Vasquez maybe can be utilized as a winger or a fullback, which can give him opportunities. But maybe I just think alone is the best option for him. Or maybe he can spend one more year at Castella. Because I just think maybe he would look a little bit um, short-headed. He made a bit of mistakes in his positioning when he played at the first team. I just think maybe he need one more year with Castella, maybe play the odd game with the first team. I just don't think we should send him out on loan immediately. Because I just think he makes that slight mistakes. And these days, the coaches and the other teams won't have time for that. He would waste his time on the bench. I just think maybe one more year with Castella would do him some good. Yep. Next, we have Sergio Arabas, and personally, I'm very excited for Sergio to uh, to go up to the first team. This year for Castilla, he's been one of the best players, alongside uh, Hugo Duro. And what's so, so good about him? He's such a silky dip, dribbler, and he, he he's he's so efficient as well. It's not often when you find these wingers who are very very good with the ball at their feet. They're not they don't have much end product, but that's not the case with Sergio. He's he gets the ball to the striker. And that's the reason why Hugo scored so many goals for for Castilla, and so I can see him coming up to the first team just like Antonio Blanco this year, next year. What do you think? Yes, I also think he makes excellent decisions on the ball. He knows when to move forward. He knows when to calm the play. I just think he's so composed as well. 
he has an excellent left foot, a good shot. He, he makes good passes. Um, he's an excellent player. I just think maybe with Asensio and Diaz, I just don't think that there would be too many players ahead of him. Maybe if Asensio leaves, I personally think that he should be in the first team getting the minutes as well. But I just fear that maybe like Marvin, maybe like Hugo, I just think he might lack minutes. I just think he's a player who needs minutes. He needs time with the ball at his feet to gain confidence. I just don't think he would get minutes with the first team. But I do think he's an amazing player. I do think he would need one more year with Castella again. Because he's a, still, he's a little bit young. He's a little bit small in his figure. Um, defenders actually took advantage of him actually a few times with some hard tackles as well. Maybe he needs one more year at Castella to toughen up. And maybe we can see where we go from there. Yeah, with um, with Sergio, I think he has made quite a few substitute appearances for us, and quite a few. I mean, loads off the bench in our thin squad this season. And I think a year in Castilla to uh, to beef up and get a bit stronger would be it would be good because in uh, I believe the third division is very very physical, and for him to do that well in the third division as as basically a very skinny skinny guy who sh- it shows how how silky he is with the ball at his feet with yes, of course i have to be careful like with attacking wingers we have to give them time to develop as well mm-hmm. it's, yeah because he needs time to develop as well we don't want to rush his development and having playing games in the second division where he's not starting and playing the one-off game he's having consistency at the moment so it's a little bit it's not the same when it's a center back i just think with the attacking winger he needs more time to develop actually mm. so next we have antonio blanco one of my favorite castilla products and he he's had a he, he's had a sensational back to the year, and it sh- uh, loads of rounded fans are very excited about him. I've seen on Twitter, loads of rounded fans are saying that he he's the next heir to Xabi Alonso, which you know might be a bit optimistic. But yeah, he it sh- he's very very good on the ball, and he shows a lot of composure. He's, he's just takes the simple option, which is a lot like Xabi Alonso. He just Instead of just going like, oh, I'm gonna attempt this to Benzema, I'm gonna he, he just knocks it about nice and crisp, which is sometimes what you need in the game. What do you think? Yeah, of course we need that kind of player, maybe to control the game, settle the game, making good choices. He makes excellent passes, maybe like Tony Cruz, knowing when to move the ball forward, when to switch the sides. I think those kind of players is important, but maybe he would need like a more dynamic player um, at the side of him, like Fede at the side of him, but he is actually a good option. And I also think we lack a lot of depth um, in the midfield position with Kuz, Modric, Adrian. I just think maybe he would get a lot of minutes, especially as Modric and Kuz have international competitions. I just think this is a perfect opportunity for him to stake his claim. Yeah, with us being linked to so many midfielders like uh, Sergei Milinkovic Savic and Nicolo Barella, he has to make his mark next season because otherwise he's going to get it replaced quickly. And this is the perfect time for him to to make his mark on the team. But when Modric and Cruz are getting getting older and their performances aren't deteriorating at all, but you know they could use some rest here and there. And Blanco can just come in, take his opportunity, and then come back out. That's that's all he needs to do. I've also seen a lot of his 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 aggression on the ball, which is very impressive for such a young midfielder. He's very very good at tackling and being first to the ball, which is which is which is very good. And for for a young midfielder, having that that will and drive is what a rounded midfielder should have. He, 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 him and Fede could be could form a fantastic partnership in the midfield. We just need that one person to to help them as well. What do you think? Yeah, I have to say you were spot on there as well. I just have to understand here that he is still young. I mean, we don't want to to get him started and then he's on the bench often. But I just think, like I said, he would have so many minutes at the start of the season, with especially with Modric, Kuz, and even Casemiro all the way on international competitions. I just think this opens the door for him. 
even Fenny's are going on international competitions as well. I think at the start of the season, I think he will be utilized well. I mean, that's excellent that he has he has his opportunity. Yep. So next we have Victor Trust, and the problem with Victor Trust is that it looks like he's going to leave right now, and that's very very disappointing because he he's a very exciting defender. He's he's very very controlled and he knows what to do and he knows when to step in stop the ball from getting past him he, he's, a, he's a rock at the back for Castilla and he's been a key key figure for Castilla in this season where which has been so successful for Raul and his men what do you think? Yeah of course like you said it looks like he might be leaving so I don't think that there might be a long term future for him because Betis is interested and maybe he may want that first team action with Betis in La Liga. I just think with the centre box it's difficult that they might get game time because we have too many options. We have Adam Militao, Nacho, Alaba. I just think one of our most unveiled stays. So that means that he might be fifth choice centre back. So it's a bit unfortunate if he stays and he has to play back up again and go back down to Castilla. But I just think maybe it's best for him that he leaves to get minutes and kick start his career. Yep. So after that, you suggested Maro Hila. Could you, could you um, elaborate on that? Yes, of course, because he's a 20 year old centre back. Um, he's good on the ball. He's strong defensively, good positioning. He's a leader on the pitch. I just think I suggested that because Carlo actually wants him to stay with the centre back on the team. I just think I haven't seen much of him at this time as much as I saw Chust. But he's a good player, good centre back. He would stay because Chust is leaving. Maybe he can be the leader for Castella in the back line. So maybe I just think it's best that he stays with the first team, maybe get some minutes if there is if we are playing three at the back. But I think he's a good player, good on the ball as well. Mm, the I think the main main thing we should do with young centre backs like that is that who aren't realistically gonna get game time is develop them and make sure they, they become to a solid La Liga level and just sell them on to teams like Betis who are ambitious and trying to get into the Europe. And that, that's that's what we need to do, M- continue making that profit. Yeah, of course, because no matter what, I think we, have, we would want to sign Kundi, we would want to sign Power Torres. So I don't see a place for them. So I just think you were spot on there as well. Yeah. So after this short interval, we'll get on to the third and final section, which is we will be discussing Luis Campos. <laughs> Okay, so this is the third and final section of the podcast and now we'll be discussing Luis Campos who is rumoured to be joining Real Madrid in the near future which is very exciting considering the fact that we are not very good with transfers all the time and some sometimes our transfers don't uh, exactly uh, pop off. And with, with Luis Campos, he's been at Real Madrid before um, in the 2010 season, season when Jose, Jose Mourinho joined. He was here as a scout and he did very well. He found Fabinho. Obviously, Fabinho did not join permanently, but he brought him back to Monaco. Do you, do you know anything about Luis Campos? Yes, of course. I think with Campos, he looks for that new generation. He looks at young players, who not only for the future, but players who can make an impact now, who can play well now. If you look at how Monaco played when they won the league, that's when Campos was there at the team. Well, that's the players he signed, actually. Mbappe and, and the other guys like Fabinho, like you mentioned. I just think he looks for young players who can contribute now to the first team. So that's a positive sign, actually. Yeah, in twenty, I've got I've got some signings he made in twenty thirteen for Monaco. He brought he was key in bringing in Jao Martino, Ramon Falcao, and James Rodriguez, and that was the season when Monaco came up, which is very exciting because you've brought in James Rodriguez and Ramon Falcao, two ambitious players. Rodriguez, one of the, a top talent for Porto, and uh, I think Ramon Falcao at that point was at Atletico Madrid, and with Jao Martino, who's at Porto at the time, so. Those are very, very, very ambitious signings. And if he could bring that to Real Madrid, which would be absolutely amazing. Obviously, yes. this, this season, he's he's had a brilliant year as well. And he's 
and the main the highlight of this year I think was set up, was selling Oz Victor Ozerman to Napoli for 70 million after signing him for 25 million then just bringing in Burek Yilmaz for free to, for, to me that's excellent business and that is something that he could bring to Real Madrid and that would be perfect what do you think? Yes, of course, that's excellent business. I think the issue with that, however, is that would he be given that power to make those these decisions at Madrid? Uh, like Monaco, like with Lille, I think he'll be given more freedom to make those decisions. I just don't think, would he be given that power to make those decisions? What do you think on that? I mean, I think it, basically he's going to be brought in as the sporting director, so he's going to be given a lot of power and that takes away power from the manager rather than evening it out. So I think he's going to have to go with a manager that's, that works with him. And we saw this in um, 2015, I believe. What was it? It was a bit later, maybe, with um, Leo when, when uh, Marcelo Bielsa was there. And they did not agree, and Marcelo Bielsa resigned as manager of Leo, which, which at the time was very shocking for many Leo fans. I mean, luckily, they stuck stuck by him for Leo's sake. But... He, he needs a manager who will listen to him and just go along with him no matter what. That's that's the main problem with uh, Lewis Campos. If he doesn't get that, then there could be real clashes between the manager and the sporting director, which is not good at all. That's the worst possible situation. What do you think? Yeah, of course, that's the worst situation because we, we signed a manager in Ancelotti before we signed Campos. However, if you look at teams like PSG, when Thomas Tuchel was there, Leonardo didn't like him very much because Leonardo came after Tuchel. And however, there were a lot of issues there. So I just hope that in the future, when Campos is there, he selects the manager, he has talks to the manager, has plans, has vision for the team. Because we don't want a situation where there's corruption between the sporting director and the manager. That's not good news for any team. Yeah, of course. But the main problem with with that is that, like, He's going to want to seize all the control and I wonder how much control Perez actually has over like transfers and stuff because that's one thing I don't know personally that much, that, that much. how much control Perez has over transfers and whether he Perez would give over trans, uh, transfer policy to um, to Los Campos is, is, a, is a big one because if he doesn't then this could this could be a catastrophe but if he does, and this this could all work in our favour because we're not in exactly the best of financial positions. That's need needlessly to say, right? But and th- that's what Lewis Campos specialises in. While he was in at Monaco, he made a three hundred and sixty two million pound profit, which is absolutely sensational. And if if he could do that for us, you know, we are, of course, a different club from Monaco. Monaco are more of a profiting club, while we are looking for more success. It, if he could do that for us on a much lower scale, just make a, a few millions here and there and bring in the players that we need him to bring in, like the good ones, Mbappe, Haaland, Milinkovic, Savic, Nicola Barella... Jules Kunde, Paul Torres, here and there, right? As well as bringing in these little, more low-key signings that aren't very well known, but they'll make us like a 20 million profit, 30 million profit, 40 million profit in the, in the coming years. And that's what we need due to our financial situation. What do you think? Yeah, of course, we need to have a clear plan as well. I think with our out campus, we are going to go after signings like Mbappe, Kunde, Alan, etc. With or without them, we are going to go after them. So, I just think that, you know, the issue, however, is that we need to sign the low-key signings, maybe who can contribute in the future. For example, maybe like the young players, maybe in Brazil or maybe in Argentina. I just think that's why we're going to have a clear transfer policy, a clear transfer plan. We should know the players we're targeting. Because with or without him, we are going to go after the big names like Mbappe or Haaland or Kunde. So maybe with him, maybe we can change our policy a bit in the players we are targeting, mm. maybe for the future. Uh, something that should be said is uh, Amonaco, he, he was the one who convinced M- Mbappe to stay and develop him, which, which is a very key factor. 
in bringing Mbappe to the Bernabeu. You know, if if we have that guy who who realistically gave Mbappe the career that he's that we put him on the pathway to that career he's going to have, then that's going to be a key point, a key point in bringing Mbappe to Real Madrid. And people think of Monaco and Lille as, as selling clubs as well, and they are. But not, let's not forget these two are teams in in the, in the league with PSG, who who just who are basically giants in that league. They just take every 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 good player from every other team in France, as well as taking the Neymars and the Mbappes. So they 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 both won the league. Monaco won the league in 2016-17, I believe it was. And Lille won the league last year as well. So it's not like he's maintaining success as well as maintaining, maintaining a profit, which is key for us. Yeah, yes, he is. And maybe if PSG wasn't in the league, maybe you can say Liga would have been more even. So I think he's doing well, especially um, with the squad that he has, with the budget that he has available. So I just think maybe it's a bigger budget maybe he can be more successful. So I just think that this actually this signing would be a good news for Madrid. Yeah, we obviously there was a few of like two weeks ago I believe it was um when uh, Luis Campos was reported reported to be agreed agreed a contract with uh, Nice for uh, to go but apparently that was all fake news and Fabrizio Romano tweeted that he was in talks with Arsenal around Madrid. Hopefully he comes to Real Madrid because we need that profit. We need to, to start making some smart financial decisions because having buying the players like Hazard or like one when when they already have one year left on their contract, it's just a bit stupid and something that Luis Campos can just iron over and say no 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 that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna buy him next summer. We just need someone who can make those smart financial decisions. What do you think? Yes, of course, because I think, um, especially with the Hazard one and maybe a few in the past, we have made some poor decisions in terms of our signings. I just think maybe we overspend, especially on Hazard. Let me stick on Hazard a bit. I just think maybe the planning to sign Hazard maybe was a bit off because maybe if you would give us this decision, maybe to sign Hazard three years ago for 150 million and set up the 100 million, two years after when he's older. I just think that maybe he should have been signed sooner because at 28 years old for 100 million, I just think that the signs didn't look too good, especially with one year left on his contract. I just think we need to know when to sign these players. Like, for example, we won't wait till Mbappe is 28 to sign him. We sign him now when he's at the peak of his powers. I just think we waited a bit too long to sign Hazard, especially when we just signed younger players like Vinny and Rodrigo. I know that Hazard had an amazing season. But, however, I just think he one year left on his contract, he was getting older. I just think we made too many mistakes as well. And I hope the situation doesn't happen again with Alaba because he is on a massive contract. We don't want four years down the line when Alaba maybe is starting to get a bit older, maybe has a bit of injuries and maybe not a short starter. We don't want situations where players are tied to long contracts and they're not benefiting the team. So I just think that we need to know like where to assign our money to, when to spend the money, how, who to assign players, when to sign the players. I think that's important as well. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So that's the end of the podcast, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Yes. Thank you so much for having me as well. Yeah, of course.